Hello everyone, for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to do different types of lighting, so it'll be less about redstone and more just general architecture. So we're here on Console Edition's tutorial map, so I have buildings to start with. And I won't be covering too many obvious types of lighting, like just putting a torch on the floor. So our first lights will be these iron and wood trapdoor lights. And the wood type are pretty straightforward to build, you just get a redstone lamp or any other type of block that can have trapdoors attached to it and you cover it in trapdoors, and then you put one more beneath it. And that's about it. Replace this one with stairs. So there you go, it works best in corners of the room, obviously, since you need to put that one on the bottom. But the one for iron trapdoors is a little more complicated. So to start with, before you power it, put the ones on the edges, on the sides of the block. And you have to use a redstone lamp for this, unlike the other one you can't use, you know, glowstone or whatever. Then put your torch down beneath it, and it'll flip the sides up, and then after the sides flip up, you put the one on top. You can also use carpet for the top of these, if you're going to be putting them in the middle of a room where you won't be able to attach that uh, top trapdoor to anything. Either way, I personally use carpet, it's transparent, so it won't cut out any of the lights. But maybe you want to put one on the ceiling. So this, let's remove this one here. Maybe you want to put one of these iron trapdoor ones on the ceiling. So, to start with, put the ones on the sides, just like we did before, and then you'll need to use a lever. Put the lever on top of the lamp and power the lever, and that'll flip all the sides up. If you use a torch, the sides won't flip the sides won't flip up, and it won't look right. And then put another trapdoor on the bottom, and you're finished with that one. Next is this almost invisible lighting, which is lighting that is completely invisible from below, except for little particle effects. So to make this light, all you do is put down an end portal and then break the end portal frames. And I'm not sure if that works on PC or on every snapshot of PC, or uh, snapshot or update. So you should let me know in the comments below for the PC viewers. I'm not actually sure if that works, but it does work on console edition. So I'll speed this up. And once I'm finished, you'll see it produces quite a bit of light here. So that's good, but it's obviously not invisible until we break these outer frames. And then you see the end portal is completely invisible from below except for those black particle effects. And the next thing I'll do is I'll repair this uh, structure in the roof in the church's ceiling. And you might notice that you can treat these ender portal blocks just like any other blocks and break them individually. And then you see they're not invisible from above, only from below. So, And obviously you can still go through that end portal no matter how you enter it, so it's best for very high ceilings for places where you don't want torches. This one is probably something more people are familiar with, it's just types of subtle lighting, so putting lighting under transparent blocks in certain ways to light up your room. So that's really just about as simple as it sounds. You take something like carpet and you put a light underneath it, and you see the light still shines through. But carpet's one of the more obvious ones. You can also use uh, enchanting tables. That's another one that most people don't know about, so you can make your enchanting table look like it's glowing. Or if you put enough bushes over a light, the light will still shine through, but you won't see it underneath the bushes, so you can have glowing bushes. Just different things like that. Experiment with different transparent blocks. This next one is one of my favorites. These are like fluorescent kind of lights, or basically wood lights that are just textured a little differently than your normal wood planks. So to build these lights, we'll just need wood blocks. Uh, sponge is just so I can see what kind of block I want to break out. And some beds, and then we'll get the actual lighting later. So first let's fill in the sides. Next I'm placing sponge just so I can tell the blocks I want to break apart from the blocks that I don't want to break. So I place the sponge, I place a bed on top of it, and I place lighting above the bed. If you wanted to use redstone lamps, you can even attach these to a light switch so you can turn these lights on and off. But I'm just using glowstone just so you can see how they look when they're on. So just seal up those from the sides, and then we'll break our sponge out and accidentally break a little bit of the wall. Fix the wall first so villagers don't freak out. And there you go, that's our nice fluorescent ceiling lighting. I really like those for professional things like offices or shops, things like that. Next is very dim lighting. So this is lighting that just barely lights up a room or even lights up a single block, but it's good for dungeons, things like that. So this doesn't really require that we build anything, but I still felt I should mention it in this video just about lighting. You will see these brown portobello mushrooms are actually a little bioluminescent. The ender chest is about as bright as a redstone lamp. And of course you have the redstone lamp itself. And these are good also if you don't want to melt ice. Of course you could just use packed ice, but if you don't have access to packed ice, these lights are just dull enough that, won't, that they won't melt your ice. 
So to be honest, these last lights, I'm not too big of a fan, but some people really like them. They're just a style of chandelier using redstone lamps. A lot of people want to have redstone lamps hanging from um, sign or uh, fence posts. That's not really possible to make it look good, but you can do this. So you will need a block of redstone, any type of piston, and redstone lamps. If you plan on actually retracting this, obviously you'll want to use sticky pistons. So I'll use sticky pistons for this video. So first we'll put our redstone in a position to power our sticky piston. And we want our sticky piston to extend one block beyond our ceiling limit. And then put a redstone block on the sticky piston and then redstone lamps either surrounding the red block of redstone or only on the bottom, depending on which one you prefer. Like I said, this isn't one of my favorite lights. It's not one that I use, but I do see it mentioned sometimes on Minecraft forums and places like that. And there's no reason to limit yourself to redstone lamps with this. You could use sea lanterns or glowstone or whatever you prefer. You could even use beacons. So that's all for today's video. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you found it helpful, and subscribe for new tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. And I'm hoping to get back into doing those mini build Mondays soon. So thank you for watching.